Senator Jeff Merkley, it's always good to speak with you. Uh, and I know uh, you're uh, in the middle of uh, all kinds of different stuff in Washington, DC. And there's two things I wanna talk with you about. I wanna talk with you about the coronavirus relief bills that are working their way through Congress. But, but first, I need to ask you about the presence of federal agents in Portland and this morning's announcement that officers from Customs and Border Protection and ICE will be leave, will leave beginning uh, Thursday. So do you have any insight into how this deal might have been reached? Well, I think it uh, was a very good work of, uh, of our governor and the pressure that we were applying about the horrific conduct of these forces in a manner that can never be accepted in our constitutional system. They've been operating as a secret police, no agency identifier, no unique identifier. They've been storming out of the building at 11 o'clock and attacking a peaceful protest and doing it with every weapon they have, uh, beating up Navy veteran with batons, uh, uh, proceeding to shoot uh, protesters in the head with impact munitions, gas, um, uh, pepper spray, flashbang grenades. Uh, and so the, the violence coming out at that moment is entirely on behalf of the federal government. Secret police sweeping people into unmarked vans have no place in America. That's why I've introduced the No Secret Police in America Act that I hope to see be part of the coronavirus package. Uh, and, and I know that uh, almost simultaneously as the announcement came from Governor Brown and acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf, President Trump said there were no plans to leave Portland. Uh, and I know you've been a, a critic of President uh, Trump. Uh, he, he kind of modified his tone about an hour later in a tweet, but you have any thoughts about uh, President Trump's uh, overarching philosophy? Uh, there's reports he's gonna send troops into Detroit and, uh, and Chicago uh, again today, or Cleveland and Milwaukee. Well, what's been very clear is this is a campaign strategy. Uh, at the very same time he was uh, escalating the, the violence in Portland, uh, he was putting up campaign ads saying, uh, uh, retain me as president, and I'm the I'm the law and order president to reduce violence. Uh, obviously, uh, he hoped Americans wouldn't know that he was uh, employing these tactics. Uh, I hope we've been successful in, in educating America about that, and I I think uh, changed the administration strategy. I know that in conversation with some of the other locations, they promised not to use secret police tactics like they used in Portland. I think that's in part because of the intense effort our delegation has done to to highlight. Uh, this uh, horrific abuse of power. Uh, let's move on to the coronavirus relief package. I know the Senate is finally talking about this uh, package for Americans struggling with the pandemic, but there's a big gap between what the GOP is proposing and what the Democrats propose. It's like $1 trillion versus $3 trillion, if I'm not mistaken. So can that gap be bridged? Well, in some fashion, it, it has to be because it's totally unacceptable that we leave America stranded. It's over two months ago that the, uh, the House passed the HEROES Pact, uh, and this, uh, this agreement uh, laid out a vision of helping on all the, the key items, education, healthcare, support for state and local governments, uh, contact tracing, uh, testing, uh, safe elections in, in no November, just to name uh, some of the efforts that they made. Meanwhile, the uh, Senate Majority Leader and, and Majority have uh, blocked any sort of discussions, no bipartisan discussions, no bicameral discussions with the House. And they've done so while basically putting the, the Senate out of action for several weeks. Uh, and I just can't believe the level of irresponsibility while America is hurting so much uh, to insist on no help uh, to uh, help guide our, our country through these difficult and uncharted waters. So I think that we're going to see a quick turnaround. I think what my Republican colleagues heard when they were back home in their home states was a lot of conversation about absolutely how irresponsible they were and how much help is needed and that they better get to work and do their job. Uh, and I know that you're working to get two bills into this new package. Uh, one would prevent or erase unpaid rent or property evictions or unpaid judgments. And, the other one would protect Americans' access to electricity and, and other utilities. So tell us about those two bills, if you can, and, and where they are in the process of this, uh, this, this, uh, this, this uh, legislation. Well, let's start by talking about the utilities. Uh, cutting off water, electricity, or broadband to a family right now is to leave them adrift, almost uh, guarantee their, their failure. Uh, and th that's just absolutely uh, unacceptable. You, you cannot function 
in terms of getting a new job or working from home in an existing job or your children being able to uh, conduct school without, without broadband uh, and you simply um, uh, are deeply damaged if your water or electricity are cut off. So these are fundamentals. They go right along with the no eviction uh, ban, uh, so the moratorium. So I certainly hope that this can be part of, um, of the package to come. The, the second piece, the credit piece, is essentially a recognition that in this unique moment where millions of people lost their jobs overnight, the inability to pay a bill is not a reflection on your past or future uh, credit ability uh, and therefore uh, should not weigh in the matter that the credit bureaus would normally weigh it. Well, Senator, uh, I know uh, you gave us a few minutes of your time in between different things on the floor of the Senate, so I appreciate that. You take care of yourself and uh, please wash your hands. Yes, Tim. Thank you very much. Uh, stay healthy. Thank you. Take care.